8 Businesses That Are Struggling Due to COVID-19 We all know that the COVID-19 pandemic has affected the business world in a very negative way, but some businesses have had it worse than others due to it. Welcome to the 9 to 5 Rebel, and in today's video, we dive into 8 businesses that are struggling due to COVID-19. Stay until the end of the video to learn which of these businesses is struggling the most, and also subscribe to our channel for more great videos like this one. Without further ado, let's begin. Eighth place, schools. Close to 80% of the world's student population, 1.3 billion children and youth, is affected by school closures in 138 countries. Taken as a measure to contain the spread of the COVID-19 pandemic, some of these closures are recent. In others, they have already been in place for months. Of course, this is just logic. Schools, colleges, and universities require many young people, teachers, and staff members to congregate for education. Most schools in the world have completely closed and moved to the online format which doesn't seem to be much of a problem, if, for example, people are able to work from home. On paper, that seems great, but the reality couldn't be further than that. When studying from home, some students might not have high-speed internet connection, more than one device if they have siblings, and that also opens the opportunity for students to cheat, turn off their cameras, and skip classes. Even those who are willing to learn find it difficult to focus on from-home classes, and the quality of certain careers, such as medicine or dentistry, makes it pretty impossible to keep hosting online classes. The final nail in the coffin that causes the school and college business to fail is that many parents don't feel like their kids are learning and have protested the cost of tuition if they can't see any actual results from paying for it. 7th place, restaurants and bars. While some restaurants can afford to do takeout and delivery only, most of them, especially the smaller ones, have been struggling to keep their business afloat. They need to make enough money to make rent or else expect their restaurant to close, and that's not even touching the topic of bars cannot afford to do takeout and delivery due to the very nature of their products. Some have innovated and are delivering shots and other types of liquors to their customers, but this is really risky and not worth it considering that most bars need to sell their liquor at a higher price than normal to stay in business. It makes a little sense for a person to order drinks from a bar when they can just order them much cheaper at the grocery store. And of course, since no one can congregate in public places, restaurants and bars are mostly closed or at reduced capacity. Sixth place, concerts. Concerts, as with many other businesses, have evolved to an online format and have seen a certain degree of success. While most artists don't really mind cutting back costs for a few months, it's difficult to really know until when will live entertainment be completely closed. If lockdowns continue longer, it will certainly hurt artists in the music industry as a whole, since most artists make a bulk of their money from tours. Many ideas have been proposed to substitute live entertainment across the world, with at-home concerts having been quite successful and separated entertainment, such as in cars, also been implemented. However, for the live entertainment industry to regain its former glory, it might need from a few months to several years. Despite this, concerts and shows have found a lot of success in the digital medium. Despite people being unable to physically leave their homes, they still desire the fun and awe experienced when watching your favorite singers belt out strong, meaningful lyrics, even if you can't watch them in public. Most event businesses will remain closed due to the pandemic for quite a few months, but they will still live in our hearts and computers, thanks to digital concerts picking up in their popularity. Fifth place. Tourism. The tourism sector has all but thrived during this pandemic, with most major hotels having to close down and the small ones filing for bankruptcy. Let's take a look at Disney, for example, which is one of the most shocking examples of this. As one of the most powerful hotel and resort chains in the world, their theme parks are very important for their income. Until March 12, 2020, Disneyland had only closed unexpectedly three times in its 65-year history, once to mourn the assassination of John F. Kennedy once more due to a 1994 earthquake, and again on September 11, 2001. On the other hand, Walt Disney World, Disney's flagship amusement park in Orlando, Florida, shuttered its doors indefinitely at the close of business on March 15. Employing over 70,000 people, Disney World is the largest single-site employer in the United States. With over 20 million visitors in 2018, Magic Kingdom, a part of Walt Disney World, is the most visited amusement park in the world. Though they have reopened and established the necessary measures for proper social distancing, it's still a bit difficult to enjoy being in a place where you can't even hug someone without risking being infected. Another example is Apex Parks Group, which had to close its 12 entertainment centers and water parks due to the pandemic, filed for a Chapter 11 reorganization on April 8th. It will be quite a long time before resorts and hotels return to normality, and the current scenario is looking quite grim for them. 
Fourth place, sports classes. Parents who take their kids to soccer have, of course, ceased taking them into their sports classes, given that most sports schools have closed across pretty much every well-known discipline. It's no surprise that playing contact sports, especially in soccer academies, involves possibly risking infection, so it's better to be safe than sorry. Most major sports academies across the world have closed their doors indefinitely due to this. Third place, events business. Probably one of the most affected by this situation are event-related businesses. Events can include social parties, concerts, weddings, baby showers, and more. Those businesses are some of the real-world victims of the COVID-19, as not only are nearly all events have been canceled across the world, but there's no real guarantee that they will be reorganized once everything comes back to normal. The pandemic will leave lasting marks on how people interact with each other and redefine what kind of events can be actually successful in today's world. Right now, everyone's top priority is their own life, not going to a live concert or a wedding. Second place, clothing and retails. Who's going to go out of their home to buy clothes when they need to focus on surviving? Most major brands have contributed by giving donations to important causes for COVID-19 research and assistance. But the truth is that most people have ceased ordering clothes in store due to the COVID-19. USA Today recently released a list of retails closing either some of their stores or all of them permanently. Here are some of them. Bath & Body Works to close 50 stores. J.C. Penney to start off with 154 stores. Nordstrom 16 stores, 3 boutiques. Pier 1 all locations. Victoria's Secret to close 235 locations. And Signet Jewelers, K and Zales parent company, says it won't reopen 150 stores. Plans to close more locations just to name a few. First place, airlines. By far the most negatively affected of all businesses, and that's saying a lot, has to be the air transportation and airlines industry. With very heavy travel restrictions having been imposed worldwide, it's almost impossible for most airlines to continue operating without experiencing severe costs. A few have been lucky to have obtained government help, funding or grants, but many more have been denied any sort of financial help and have been left to fend for themselves. Avianza, which served more than 30 million passengers last year as one of Latin America's largest airlines, filed on May 10th, with all of its passenger flights grounded since mid-March due to COVID-19. On another note, British airline Flybe, one of Europe's largest regional carriers, entered administration and grounded all flights on March 5th. Passenger demand has completely plummeted at a worldwide level. People have kept second-guessing the need to fly anywhere that's away from home and avoiding getting out of their homes as much as possible. Probably the only reason someone would get out of their home at this time is to pick up a relative who just came back from studying abroad or from a trip that had to be canceled before its end. So what are your thoughts on the eight businesses that are struggling the most due to COVID-19? Are you noticing your local retailers closing down? Let us know in the comments below. Also, make sure to leave us a like, share this video with your friends and subscribe to our channel for more great videos like this one. We hope you enjoyed it and we'll see you next time.